Hello everyone and welcome back to Orms TV. My name is Jess and this is the video where you can't see my face because this is a tutorial video and I therefore do not need to be on screen. Yay! I am way more excited about this than I probably should be, quite possibly because the lockdown life is real and I haven't had a haircut in two months and I'm very tired of seeing my scraggly hair all over the Orms YouTube channel. I have mentioned a few times that I edit all of the Orms TV videos in DaVinci Resolve and that means that a lot of you have asked me for some Resolve tutorials for beginners. This week I have a lot of other things on my plate and thus could not film a long complex video like I usually do, so I decided it could be fun to introduce you guys and girls to 15 easy shortcuts that will make you a faster editor in DaVinci Resolve, especially if you are just starting out quick little side note, I am editing on Windows and therefore I use the control key for a lot of these shortcuts. If you are editing on Mac, just replace the control key with your command key and the shortcut should work just fine. Let's start off with what I like to refer to as navigational shortcuts. These shortcuts will help you to move around the interface and your timeline in DaVinci Resolve faster so you aren't wasting time by trying to get to a certain point in your video. First up in the navigational shortcuts, we have the side arrows. Your left and right arrows on your keyboard can be used to both navigate your timeline faster and to fine tune your playhead's position on the timeline. If you hold the right arrow down, you will see that it plays through your timeline at a constant accelerated speed. Holding the left arrow down does the same thing in reverse. If you would like to make small adjustments, you can tap repeatedly on either your left or right arrow key and this will move the playhead by one frame at a time either forwards or backwards depending on which arrow key you use. Your up and down arrows on your keyboard can also be used to navigate your timeline faster. The point where two different clips or elements on the timeline meet are called edit points. Your up and down arrows on your keyboard allow you to jump rapidly between edit points without having to watch your entire video through. The down arrow will jump you forward between edit points towards the end of your video, while the up arrow will jump you backward between edit points towards the beginning of your video. Now, what if you want to play forward or backwards through your timeline at an accelerated rate without holding down on your side arrow keys? You can do this using the J and L keys. Tapping L once will cause your video to play forward, and every time you tap it, it will increase the playback speed. J does the same thing, except it plays in reverse. K will stop playback on the exact frame where your playhead is. Hitting it again will not restart playback. Using the spacebar will act as a pause play controller that allows you to halt and resume playback every time you hit it. Sometimes when our timeline is zoomed out really far like this, it can be really hard to see what's going on down there. If you hold down control and tap on the plus key, it will zoom into your timeline, focusing on where your playhead is located. If you hold down CTRL and tap the minus key, it will zoom you back out to give you a broader view of your timeline. This is a much more efficient way to zoom in and out of your timeline than using the slider located just above the timeline. Perhaps you were wondering if there is a faster way to bring your whole timeline into view without using the CTRL minus shortcut, and yes, there is. Holding down SHIFT and pressing Z on your keyboard will shrink your entire timeline so that the whole thing comes into view. Sometimes we will use the scroller on our mouse to zoom into the timeline viewer to see what is actually going on in a shot. Rather than navigating to the drop-down menu top left of your timeline viewer, just press Z and it will reset the timeline viewer so that the image shrinks into view. What if you quickly want to make your viewer full screen so you can see what's going on? Tapping P on your keyboard will take you in and out of the full screen viewer. Next up, let's look at editing shortcuts. These shortcuts are grouped together because they all relate to bringing clips onto the timeline and adjusting them once they are on the timeline. 
if you were using a three-point editing system where your original media is in the source viewer on the left, the timeline viewer is on the right, and the timeline lies below both viewers. This is where your I and O keys on your keyboard come in really handy. Say that I want to make a selection from this frame in my source media. All I need to do is tap the I key to mark an endpoint, find the place where I would like the out point to be, press the O key, and now I have marked my in and out points and made a selection. I can now bring this clip onto the timeline and only those points will be selected. Another part of the three-point editing system is using the insert controls that appear when you click on the clip in the source viewer, hold down and drag over the timeline viewer. They appear here on the right. Each of these controls here on the right have a shortcut that will save you another unnecessary mouse movement. You can insert the selection from your source media onto the timeline where your playhead is positioned by pressing the F9 key. You can overwrite an existing clip on the timeline with a new one from your source viewer from the point where your playhead is positioned by pressing the F10 key. You can completely replace an existing clip on the timeline with a new one by positioning your playhead at the beginning of that existing clip and pressing F11. And finally, you can place a new clip on the track above an existing clip by positioning your playhead at the point where you would like the new clip to appear and pressing F12. In DaVinci Resolve, we use the blade tool to cut up clips once they are on our timeline. However, there is a much faster way to do this using the Control B shortcut. Select your clip and then place your playhead at the point where you would like the clip to be bladed. Hold down Control and tap B once and you will see that it has bladed the clip at the point where your playhead was positioned. Now, what if you have bladed a clip by mistake and you want to rejoin it to its other half? Place your playhead in the middle of the edit point made by your accidental blading, hold down the Alt key, and press the forward slash key once. And your clips will rejoin as if they were never separated. Sometimes we need to duplicate clips. Manually copying and pasting them is annoying and really slow, so I'm going to show you a faster way to do it with shortcuts. First of all, click on the clip that you would like to duplicate to select it. Hold down Control and press C once. Then move your playhead to a point on the timeline where you would like your clip to be pasted. Hold down Control again and press B once and you will see that a duplicate of your original clip appears at that point on your timeline. But what if you want to remove a clip completely from its old location on your timeline and paste it somewhere new entirely? Once again, select the clip, hold down Ctrl, but instead of pressing C, this time press X. You'll notice that the clip has disappeared completely from the timeline. To reintroduce it to the timeline in a new location, drag your playhead to where you would like the clip to appear and press Ctrl V again. The clip will now be pasted in this new location on your timeline. Would you believe it if I told you that there is an even faster way to duplicate clips? Click on the clip you would like to duplicate, hold down the ALT key, drag either to the right or upwards and you will see that a whole new duplicated version of your clip has been created. As editors, we often have to make very small adjustments to our clips on our timeline like one frame at a time small. This is actually where your comma and full stop keys come in handy. Select the clip you would like to move by clicking on it. You'll see that it is selected because it has a red box around it. If you would like to move your clip one frame to the left, press the comma key once. You can also move it one frame to the right by pressing the full stop key once. You can hold down either key to move the clip by multiple frames in either direction. If you go ahead and select the edges of a clip, you can use the comma and full stop keys to either extend or decrease the duration of that clip by one frame at a time. You can also select the edit point between two clips by hovering your mouse over it and left clicking once, and then you can use your comma and full stop keys to either move the edit point to the left or to the right. 
Congratulations, you made it through all 15 shortcuts and you're probably well on your way to becoming a much speedier editor in DaVinci Resolve. Ladies and gents, if you found value in this video, I really hope that you'll consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. We make educational videos about photography, filmmaking and visual literacy, as well as gear reviews and features on well-known South African creators. So I'm pretty sure there is something for every creative individual on Orms TV. You could also give this video a like to let me know that it helped you and that you want more content just like this. If there is a particular aspect of editing that you would like more insight into, please pop your requests in the comments below. I promise I read all of your comments and respond to as many as I can, so I won't miss any questions or suggestions. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, cheers.